know, you already save a lot of money every year thanks to our videos. So save on car parts too. Buy them on the Mr. Auto app. Shipping is free. You will find the bulk shock absorbers used in the video exclusively on the Mr. Auto website and through the link in the description. Turn your engine off. Pull up the handbrake. Pull on the bonnet release lever and open the bonnet. In order to change the front shock absorbers on your vehicle, you must lift the front of the car and remove the wheels to have complete access to the suspension system. Raise the front of the vehicle and put it in the two axle stands. We strongly suggest watching the tutorial Raising Your Vehicle Safely before carrying out this step. You will then be able to take off the wheels. Don't forget to slide them under the vehicle. During this operation, you will work on the steering system of your vehicle. When you change the front shock absorbers on your vehicle, it is advised to check the wheel alignment. These elements can often get jammed, so use a penetrating oil to facilitate the operation. You now have to remove the stabilizer link bar. It connects the stabilizer link so that the wheels are always in contact with the ground. To do this, we recommend watching our video Changing your stabilizer link bar on your Peugeot 307. Stop the rotation of the tie rod end with the Allen key and remove the nut using the spanner. Remove the nut, then the sway bar link. It may be necessary to lever it to make this part easier. Using a socket wrench and an 80mm socket, unscrew the two screws on the base of the shock absorber. Hold the nut with an 80mm spanner, then remove it. When you take the shock absorber out of the steering knuckle, you have to be careful, otherwise the gimbal will come out and the oil in the gearbox will start leaking. If that happens, place a receptacle to collect the liquid. That is why, when taking out the shock absorber, do not be afraid to push the gimbal into its housing to avoid the oil in the gearbox leaking out. Now, to disassemble the front shock absorbers, it is first important to remove the windscreen frame and then the windscreen wipers. Before removing the windscreen wipers, place adhesive tape in order to keep a precise indication of their location at the end position. This will make it possible to correctly position them when reassembling with a 16mm spanner and unscrew the lock nuts. Remove the windscreen wiper arms by making small movements up and down. If they're not coming out, we recommend taking a windscreen wiper remover to facilitate the process. Remove the two rivets that hold the upper part of the windscreen frame, pushing down the central part and then pulling it up. You can now remove the windscreen frame, shifting the seal and lifting it off. You must now move the brake fluid reservoir. To do this, unscrew the two screws using Torx 20 socket. Using a thin flatted screwdriver, remove the plastic holding rivets on the fabric cover by levering it off the central part. Then, remove the second part of the rivets and move the textile cover out of the way. This will enable you to pass the spanner through to unscrew the nuts on the shock absorber head. You will also have to work the windscreen wiper motor to enable to fix the control part in a position that makes it possible to gain access to the shock absorber head. You can now access the heads of your car's shock absorbers. Using a 21mm spanner, a socket wrench and a Torx 30 socket, unscrew the nut on the upper mount. Once released, hold the shock absorber in one hand and finish off the unscrewing with the other hand. Put the shock absorber to the side.
Hello, if this video helps you, like and subscribe. Take the new shock absorber and all the accessories that you will find on the video description on the mist rotor side. In order to change the shock absorber, you must now separate it from the spring. You can find a description of the tool used in the video, which we think is the most adapted to the operation. Careful, pay attention as you compress the spring. This is not without risk and should be undertaken paying very careful attention. Install the shock absorber on the tool, then tighten the mobile flange against the spring, controlling its position carefully. Once the shock absorber is free in the spring, you can use a 19mm offset wrench and a 6mm Allen key to unscrew the suspension strut support bearing, removing the bearing and the upper spring support. Finally, remove the other elements that you will be able to use, depending on wear and tear. Remove the shock absorber from the spring. Take your new shock absorber. You need to pump it several times on the actuator to get the system going. Unscrew the lock nut on the stem. Be careful, you're going to use this nut later on to fix the upper mount on the shock absorber. You can also change the shock absorber mount as well as the shock absorber stop and its protective sleeve. You can also reuse them if they're not too worn down. Put the stop in place and then its protective sleeve. Position everything in the spring. Pay careful attention to place the bottom of the spring so that it supports the shock absorber flange. Then install the end of the sleeve, the upper spring support, the shock absorber mount. And finish by screwing in the lock nut onto the shock absorber stem. Tightly fix it in place using a 19mm offset wrench while holding the stem with a 6mm Allen key. Unscrew the spring compression tool, paying attention to the position of the spring on the lower shock absorber support. You have now finished preparing the new part. Start by putting the shock absorber in place, then screw the head of the shock absorber back in. Start by hand, then finish off with a socket wrench. The final tightening should be done with a torque wrench. Using a wire brush, clear the hub carrier to make it easier to insert it into the shock absorber. Then, put the screws back in place. Finalize the tightening of the screws with a torque wrench. Put the stabilizer link bar into its upper housing and screw it in. Finalize the tightening of the screws with a torque wrench.
the fabric cover back on, replacing the central part of the plastic rivets, then the second ones. Put the windscreen frame back in place. Pay careful attention to sliding it under the waterproof seal. Then push firmly down to clip it back in place. Screw the brake fluid reservoir back in. Reassemble the windscreen wiper arms without exaggerating when tightening them in place. the two plastic rivets back in place. Then you will be able to put the wheels back on your vehicle, putting it back on the ground before properly fixing them in place. Operation completed. Please support us. Subscribe and like the video, that will be really cool.